Awesome. Hello, everybody joining us today. Um, welcome to today's webinar. If you can see the screen, just let us know in the chat. Um, Want to make sure everybody can see all of the content that we've prepared today. Hopefully anyone tuning in from Florida is safe from the tropical storm. I know that it passed. We I live here in central Florida, so um, thankfully nothing major here, just some rain, albeit it did come down sideways a bit because of all the wind, but um, overall not not too bad here. Um, so I hope everyone else is is feeling the same if you're you're tuning in from Florida and I think it's moving on its path up to Georgia. So if anyone's tuning in from Georgia, hope everybody is safe. Yes. Let us know how the weather is, where you're tuning in from. Obviously, Florida just had their tropical storm. It's a lovely hot day here in Denver, Colorado, which is where I'm tuning in from. Looks like everything's good in St. Augustine. It's awesome. Glad everybody's staying safe. 100 degrees in Louisiana. Oh, oh. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> it's that time oh, of year. Boy. Breezy in Wisconsin. It sounds lovely there. <laughs> Mid 70s. Oh, I wish. Oh, man. Sounds Hellish beautiful. in Cincinnati, though. <laughs> Good Lord. It's that, uh, you know, it's August. It's summer heat. Ooh, perfect day in Northern Michigan. See, I want to be where everybody else is right now. It's way <laughs> too hot here. <laughs> awesome. Well, it looks like we've got quite a few people on. So I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, get things started. So, um, hey, everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tiara Steffen, and I am the Product Marketing Coordinator here on the QGIVE team. And today I'm joined by Justin Cook, who is our Director of Demand Generation. And he's going to be giving us a look at how you can host cost-effective peer-to-peer fundraisers. And we're also gonna be going over some tips and tools for recruiting the best possible peer-to-peer -peer participants to fundraise on your organization's behalf. So a few housekeeping notes before we get started. We are recording the webinar today, so everyone, all registrants will receive an email tomorrow afternoon with a link to the session as well as some additional resources. Um, please feel free to use the chat for any general discussion and to talk with your fellow fundraisers on the webinar today. And if you have any questions, we'd love to hear them. You can add those into the Q&A tab in the chat. We'll answer them at the end of the webinar. And if you're having trouble with the Q&A tab, no worries. Just drop your questions in the chat. We're keeping track of everything and we'll make sure to answer those questions at the end as well. And if you use social media, please feel free to share any highlights or your favorite takeaways from the webinar and give us a follow. And now I'm gonna give it over to Justin so he can tell you a little bit about himself and get this webinar started. Thank you for that great intro, Tiara. As Tiara mentioned, my name is Justin Cook. I am the Director of Demand Generation here um, at QGIVE and now coming together with the uh, Bloomerang team as well. So super excited to um, get started on that journey, journey of um, uh, being on one team. It's going to be exciting um, and promoting the giving platform that we have. Um, for those that uh, don't know, uh, demand, like anything about demand generation or anything like that. Basically, my my role is to um, optimize the user experience. So wherever you are looking to learn about QGIVE and now Bloomerang, um, my role is to basically be there and provide you with all of the information that you uh, would need to know to use one of our platforms. So um, really uh, just there to provide information and do all of these great webinars and provide resources and help um, anybody that is looking to learn more about any of the fundraising tools uh, or the uh, CRM platform as well. So um, just there to be helpful and provide everything that you need on best practices and to learn more about the products. 
So we are going to dive really deep today into peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers um, and talking more about how um, you can get your board members involved uh, with that fundraising. It can be historically difficult uh, to get board members to fundraise. And so peer-to-peer uh, -peer is actually a really effective strategy to sort of overcome some of those fears, right? Um, some board members are very seasoned uh, in helping a nonprofit and some aren't. And so overall, fundraising can be difficult. If you're not used to talking to a lot of people and asking for money, getting that muscle together can be really difficult. And so there are ways um, in which you can actually make this really easy on uh, both any of your supporters, uh, if you're looking to activate them to raise funds on your behalf, um, and your board members as well, as they are people too. Um, and so they may be hesitant to fundraise as well. And so we're going to walk through today everything about peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, and then how some of the tools can actually help you to activate uh, both your supporters, volunteers, donors, sponsors, and your board members to help raise funds on your behalf. So let's first start with why peer-to-peer -peer is such an effective fundraising strategy. And the reason is, is because storytelling is one of the most powerful forms of fundraising. When people feel connected to your nonprofit, they will be more apt to give to your organization. And what peer-to-peer -peer does is it empowers your nonprofit to not only tell your story, but it also gives a platform for all of your supporters, anyone that is raising funds on your behalf, to reach out to their network and talk about your nonprofit. And word of mouth is one of the best ways that a marketer can spread the uh, awareness of their of their organization and for your nonprofit specifically to spread your mission. We are more inclined to believe something that a friend or family member is telling us uh, because it is coming from someone that we trust. And so that's why peer-to-peer -peer is so powerful. We're utilizing the connections that our networks already have and activating them to tell their story about their interaction with your organization. And this can get you in front of a lot of different individuals. As you can imagine, looking at some local celebrities and some other uh, maybe business leaders in your community, they have a lot of connections. And so if you are activating and looking into different types of people that are well-connected, imagine the potential network that they will reach out to and how that can drive awareness for your mission. The other really powerful aspect of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is that it actually provides the tools for those that are raising funds on your behalf. So think about uh, providing email tools and text tools and social media tools to help your supporters not only find, but to also quickly reach out to their networks. And one of the a great way is through a fundraising dashboard, which we'll dive into in a second. Another really powerful component of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is the competition piece. We're all naturally competitive, whether we like to admit it or not. We all like to compete to um, raise the most money or to gain the most donors. And through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, you can actually create this fun but competitive fundraising environment in which you are getting your supporters to engage and keep motivated because they want to compete for the top spot of the ultimate fundraiser. And the last aspect of this is fundraising motivation. So through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, we call this gamification. And I'll save you the whole spiel about why gamification is such a useful tool for motivating those that are fundraising on your behalf. But essentially what gamification is, is making a, a, a simple task such as creating an email and providing some type of steps to get there. And it's gamifying. So if you think about a traditional uh, video game where you level up, right? You level up, level one, level two, level three, level four. All of those are different moments in time in which you are... Uh, getting a sense of accomplishment because you've reached the next step. And peer-to-peer -peer fundraising does the same thing. It gamifies the whole process so that as supporters reach different fundraising milestones, so maybe they're the leader in fundraising or uh, they've reached $1,000 raised for your organization, 
giving them a badge, for example, gamifying that and rewarding them for all of the hard work that they put in. And it's really, um, it's really great to give your fundraisers, your supporters, the tools to raise money on your behalf. But it can be really difficult if you're trying to provide different logins to different areas. And that's where peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platforms are really helpful to um, alleviate this, where all your supporters need to do is sign up to your peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. They log in to a single dashboard and they get access to a ton of different things um, that is uh, relative to what you are raising funds for and they are trying to support your organization with. So for example, um, something that is built into the QGIF fundraising platform uh, for our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools is your supporters can uh, log into a single dashboard and your organization has the ability to upload fundraising resources. So whether you wanna provide them with social media templates and images, um, if you want to provide them with email templates so they can just copy and paste into the email tool that we have, they can easily do that. Uh, text templates where they can just quickly add in text fundraising uh, component to their fundraiser um, and any other storytelling pieces that you want to provide them. So think about your, your missions, um, uh, brand video, uh, telling everyone about your story or any testimonials that you have about the impact that your organization makes. Not only does this fundraising dashboard organize all of these resources and provides a single place for uh, your supporters to log into and access them, uh, it also allows your supporters to create and customize their own personalized fundraising pages. So going back to that word of mouth component where your supporters can tell their story, they can hop on, hop in and really personalize it to the way that they feel um, that they have, uh, they want to make an impact for your organization or your organization has already impacted them. So letting them tell their own story, as well as uh, different pieces to encourage them to get more familiar with the fundraising dashboard, uh, like a welcome quest. So this isn't just exclusive to the QGIF fundraising platform. So if you are using peer-to-peer -peer fundraising or you're evaluating it, right, while you're here to talk about it, just know that there are elements to the fundraising tools that you have that can help alleviate and streamline this process for all your supporters. And you can imagine it's they probably really, really enjoy just logging into one area to where they can access all your tools. So talking about why peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and you know, talking a bit more about some of the tools that can help enable you. Let's talk about the different types of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, because there are a couple of different ones in which uh, you are you can utilize to activate different supporters. And I want you to think about this and that the, the fundamental concept of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising doesn't change. The idea that you are recruiting someone to fundraise on behalf of your organization to tell their story of how your organization has impacted them is, and then they reach out to their networks to raise money on your behalf. That fundamental idea is there, but there's different types that are layered over that, that your different, that your organization can utilize uh, to engage different types of supporters. So a really great example of this is the traditional type of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Most people probably think about this as a 5K or a walkathon or a bikeathon, uh, where your organization essentially just does a mass uh, a mass event, right? It's in person. You're inviting a bunch of people, requires a ton of planning on site to get everything organized, and then you have your participants raise funds on your behalf, and then it all comes together. Uh, at the in-person event where they participate in the 5K or the walk or bike-a-thon, right? So those are very the the very much traditional ways of um, thinking about peer-to-peer peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And through the different uh, times that we've uh, experienced, such as COVID and having to go to uh, purely virtual for a little bit, right? Uh, there's been a lot of other types that have sprung up really over the last couple of years uh, that have a lot of really exciting elements to them. So for example, um, DIY fundraising. So this is essentially uh, a way for your um, 
your organization to put up a fundraising page year round and your uh, supporters jump in and can fundraise at any time based on a life event that they have. So actually a really good example of this is uh, a birthday. So if someone uh, is really charitable and instead of getting birthday gifts to themselves, they want all of their friends and family to actually donate to your organization through the peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. And DIY fundraisers are really great for this because it is a do-it-yourself model. And there's a ton of different types uh, that you can utilize with this. So uh, birthdays is a great example, uh, anniversaries, uh, weddings as well, instead of a registry, uh, donating to your organization. There's a ton of different ways uh, in which DIY fundraisers can be utilized uh, to raise funds. Uh, some other creative ideas that we have seen uh, continue to pop up, uh, sales and services. So instead of uh, the like birthday and the anniversary where people are donating, people are actually donating their time and people just pay to donate that time. So, uh, or they're donating items essentially, and people buy that item uh, through a donation to your organization, like a bake sale or a car wash, for example, uh, as well as activity workshops. So uh, if someone is really knowledgeable, for example, about cooking, they can donate that time and anyone that donates within that time frame, uh, they can offer up their services to do a cooking class. So, you know, thinking about some of the different ways that you can utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, it's essentially the same thing, right? The core fundamental, but there's a couple of different ways that we can execute, for example, like DIY or the traditional peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. The other type, which is why you're all here today, uh, is network fundraising. So network fundraising is one of those uh, fundraising types that is really versatile, versatile. So it can be a standalone campaign itself that you run and you just have board members or local celebrities, community leaders, uh, local businesses and corporations activating them to raise funds on your behalf, right? It doesn't have to have like a big event to it. Uh, there's a lot of different method uh, methods here with network fundraising where you don't need that in-person event. It can take a lot to coordinate and get all of that together for that type of uh, in-person event coordination. And so the way I want you to think about network fundraising is that it doesn't have to have that big component to it. You can simply do this by asking board, member, board members to uh, fundraise on behalf of your organization, putting together a fun theme around the campaign, and then making a competition out of it uh, to see who could raise the most funds. That's a simple, uh, completely virtual, essentially, uh, fundraiser that you can host without those big events. However, we do see where network fundraising can be utilized very effectively uh, with these types of big in-person events. Um, a really great example of that, which we'll dive into a little bit later as well, is uh, the uh, St. Louis Dancing with the Stars, where one of our uh, our clients actually does this whole fundraiser where uh, they take the same model of Dancing with the Stars and they put it in a fundraising perspective. And so uh, local leaders and celebrities uh, sign up to essentially put on a dance and they learn that dance. And then throughout that, they're writing updates and asking for funds and um, trying to generate more awareness of your organization and their friends and family can donate to your organization, which essentially is to them. Um, and then it all comes together with this big... Um, this big event where they showcase their dancing skills and then people can vote by donating to your organization. So lots of ways that this can be utilized. And that's one example of how that in-person component can really fit in. Um, so down here, you can also see where uh, we were talking about this a little bit in depth about um, offering an incentive in the standalone campaign on who raises the most, so getting your board members to compete, um, and whoever raises the most, they get some type of prize for that, right? Um, and then as well as the contest uh, that we just talked through about donors uh, voting for the, the best person with donations and choosing who wins, for example, the Dancing with the St. Louis Stars. Let's talk more now and dive deeper into engage engagement, right? All of this is falls down if you don't get your donors and volunteers and sponsors and board members on board 
uh, to uh, work with your organization, to sign up and to uh, engage with all of these different types of fundraisers that we've been talking about. So the first step is really with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is to form a committee. So getting uh, together uh, a group of either staff and your board members essentially to plan and execute and identify um, and recruit specific types of advocates to help uh, spread the word about your fundraiser and get more people uh, in the door to raise funds on your behalf. So this committee is there to plan and coordinate everything and then they're going to look to start recruiting people that they think will help uh, generate more buzz about your fundraiser uh, and recruit other people to uh, start fundraising on your behalf. Then you're going to want to look into creating a retention strategy. So uh, with the peer-to-peer -peer, with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, right, we're going to get in a lot of new donors. It's really important. And a key stat here to think about is that on average, peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraisers generate about 300 new donors, right, over the course of a year. It's one of the most effective fundraising strategies that we've seen because of that word of mouth element. But with all of those new donors means that you have to have effective communication to retain them, right? We want to continue to grow the funds that we raise year over year. Um, and so creating an effective retention strategy revolving around all the new donors that we get through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is incredibly important. Um, and making sure that we're thanking them and then even inviting them to join again next year. And one of the other like key strategies that comes into peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, really all of your fundraising is looking on how you can engage your local, your any corporations that are uh, in your local community and any of the local businesses uh, that are in your community as well. Um, you want to reach out. You want to ask to see if they're interested in either giving a donation to your organization or even spreading it, spreading your fundraising around to all of their staff, right? Uh, we actually see a lot of different peer-to-peer -peer fundraising types revolve around engaging local businesses. A great example of this is actually Geico. Um, so they have a ton of different local offices throughout the U.S. And so what they like to do is they like to go into uh, a specific uh, region, and they like to create a competition for all of their different agencies that they have uh, to give back and have them all compete to raise more funds or whatever the fundraiser that they're working off of. So thinking in that mindset where how can you engage your board members to uh, reach out to some of these local businesses, to other parts of the, the leaders that are leading these different corporate agencies, right? How can we get them more involved uh, not only to donate and to sponsor anything that we're working on, but also getting an awareness in staff and seeing if the, they're interested in joining. So as I was mentioning previously, I wanted to expand a bit on this advocate group because it is a super powerful way to kickstart uh, the fundraising. And this can really start with your board members. Your board members can be this advocate group where they talk to each other and their job is to go and recruit other people to start fundraising and donate to your organization as well. So outside of board members, though, there are other places that you can look. And what we're looking for with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is, are people that are passionate about your cause. These can be top past fundraisers from other peer-to-peer -peer fundraising uh, fundraisers that you've hosted in the past. This can be a group of individuals that consistently donates to your organization. Uh, this is a great group of people like the, the younger generations, like Gen Z, where they are very much willing to jump into philanthropy, but they don't always have the funds to back it up and providing them with other ways to uh, support your organization. You can tap into uh, your volunteer base, those that are often there uh, working with your organization side by side, um, and even those that often interact with your organization on social media. So there's a ton of different areas in where you can find these passionate people to help support your cause, and you just have to look and find for those that are that have shown that interest. The other key component about this advocate group as you are um, recruiting them to 
uh, help you with this peer to peer fundraiser is lots of communication. So it it is very important to set clear expectations up front of how you want to utilize them um, and how you want them to help recruit other people as well. Um, and so making sure that you're thinking through, you know, emails, personal phone calls, um, all of in-person meetings, all of those are really different ways to think about how you can engage them, but being very clear in that communication um, of how you want them to participate in your fundraising. And once you do create this group, it is important to provide them with the resources to spread the word about your peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, as well as uh, having them, giving them templates to recruit other uh, people to fundraise. So, you know, we we're talking about that fundraising dashboard earlier about having a single place to log into with all of the resources. It's a great place to add that. You know, you've communicated with them about uh, the important way, how to um, recruit your um, other participants, but then providing them with email and uh, text templates and social media templates, all are really important to help um, get that kick started and help you start building up a uh, sizable uh, supporter base that is going to fundraise. As you start to recruit more supporters to fundraise, it's going to be really important to um, inspire them. So there's a lot of different areas in where um, you want to think about this. And uh, one of these things too, like specifically with your board members is those that are like a little bit hesitant to uh, to fundraise on your behalf is just have a meeting with them, sit down, talk to them about the process. What does this mean to have you come in and to fundraise? And then showing them how this makes a bigger impact. As your board members, they should know what that impact is, but let's be real, that's not always the case. And some people are really hesitant. So being able to showcase what that impact is going to be, what are the testimonials and examples of your services, do you have a brand video that you use consistently? As an example here with the sharing center, giving them not only the visualization of that impact, but then being able to inspire them to take that next step um, to start raising funds. And as you're thinking about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, there are four key behaviors that the uh, team here at QGive has identified over the years that makes a successful fundraiser versus a not successful fundraiser. And when I say successful fundraiser, I am talking about the individual supporter that is raising funds, but when your individual supporters who are raising funds succeed, your fundraiser overall succeeds. So I want you to think about it in that regard. So one of the first key behaviors here is personalizing that fundraising page. We've talked a lot about the word of mouth component, being able to talk to your friends and family and, and uh, recruiting them to raise funds on your behalf. Personalizing the fundraising page is a huge component. So we do encourage all of our um, organizations that do utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising to create a base template for any fundraising page. So if someone logs in and they have signed up to raise funds, at least they have something to work off of that is uh, related to your organization's story. But we want to encourage our supporters to jump in and personalize their pages because those that do often raise about seven to 18 times more than those who don't, which is an incredible stat to even think about. Um, and I've, I've said this stat thousands of times and it still gets me every single time. And it really does go back to that personal storytelling element um, and getting your uh, supporters to basically tell their own story. And one of the great things about uh, the fundraising pages, and I'm going to use QGIVE as an example, but I want you to think about uh, other peer-to-peer -peer platforms into this as well, is that it also allows them to upload their own impact images. If they've ever volunteered for your organization in the past, or uh, they've been someone that uh, has helped, uh, has been helped by your organization, if they want to share that story and be able to put images on there, they can. So it's not only the the text component, think about the visualization component as well. And that's why it's like, it's really powerful because then your supporters can use that in all the different fundraising mediums that they'll utilize from email and text and social media. Speaking of emails, we have found that supporters who send emails raise about two to 11 times more than supporters who don't send emails. A lot of different speculation on 
why this is the case, but essentially, if your supporters are sending out emails, it means that you know they are reaching out full stop, right? We know that they are at least communicating with their networks. And if they do communicate, then we know that we're at least getting awareness out there and we'll most likely see more donations come from that because we are getting it out there and they are get, sharing their story. Uh, with uh, fundraising emails, there are two major obstacles that comes into this that we want to overcome. And the first one is your supporters have busy lives. They may have kids, may have another uh, family member they need to support. They probably have a job. Um, there's a lot of different things that can be going on in the life of your supporter. And the other part is that anxiety that we've talked about uh, with asking for money. And so what's really important to consider here is how you're going to make fundraising uh, specifically with email fundraising, easier. And that's where those fundraising email templates that we were talking about earlier, those email appeal templates, uh, providing them with um, uh, AI prompts where they can maybe plug that into a chat GPT, exam for example, or uh, use QGIVs built-in fundraising AI content assistant. There's a, a lot of different ways to think about how we can make this easier for our supporters. Uh, posting to social media, we also see that um, our supporters who update their social media uh, about every five days raise three times more. And so that's that's a, another major component when you are evaluating how you're going to utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is what platforms make it easy for your supporters to share on social media and which ones don't. Because this is a major component uh, for your supporters to be able to, to quickly share that um, and really break through the noise of all of the activity that uh, those those that they are reaching out to may have. They have busy lives as well. Uh, they get tons of emails as well. So providing an easy way for your supporters to change it up a bit and post it on social media. And the last part of this is that gamification piece. So when we talk about badges here, badges are a huge component in gamification because it is a, a reward that you can do digitally. Um, and so reaching fundraising milestones is one of those major components of that. And some platforms have a gamification piece built in and others don't. So another big component to think about when you're looking at peer-to-peer -peer fundraising in general uh, but through the QGIF platform, we do see that if a supporter raises at least one badge, they earn at least one badge, they raise about $306, whereas those that don't generally only raise about $89. So when you multiply that across the board for if you have 30 people fundraising for you and all of them have earned a badge, that's a big difference compared to those that don't. So thinking through the different milestones, and the milestones don't have to just be digital as well. There's a lot of different peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that utilize uh, rewards, as we were talking about earlier, with incentives um, about uh, just giving giving away things like a Bluetooth speaker or um, a t-shirt for your fundraiser. Lots of different components where you can actually give physical uh, rewards for reaching different fundraising milestones and rewarding your supporters for that, because that will continue to keep them engaged. So talking through all of the communication tools, right? We've talked about um, a lot of them. So when you are looking for and evaluating, how are you gonna pull this off? How are you gonna host a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? How are you gonna get your board members to uh, really buy in and make it really easy for them? There's a couple of different components. Uh, so we talked a lot about making it easy to share on social media networks through email and text fundraising. Um, another big component for your emails is being able to allow your supporters to personalize their emails. So I personally, whenever I see, um, hey, hey, Justin, like it tends to catch my eye more than just, hey there, right? Because it's personalized to me, I know that they have at least paid a little attention to who I am and how I've interacted with the organization in the past. And then also utilizing email lists too. So if I want to personalize uh, my email communication to my grandparents because I know that there's one way where I can get them to donate versus maybe my parents, for example. Being able to upload different email lists um, and to then communicate 
uh, with personalized communications. And I'd also look for a way to integrate with Facebook fundraisers. Uh, it's a really cool way for your supporters to just plug into their Facebook um, and to raise funds directly on their Facebook page. Uh, and then looking into the different gamification tools. So, uh, for example, uh, a, a built-in default badge system uh, is what's built into the QGIF platform. Uh, so it rewards them for anyone that reaches 100% of their goal. Uh, they have the most donors. So different milestones, but then also being able to create custom badges and creating custom uh, rewards based on the different milestones that they hit for your organization. Uh, leaderboards, this is that competitive piece that we've talked about earlier. And a really way to motivate your board members as well to actually visualize who's in the lead, uh, who's raising the most, or any of the other supporters that you are uh, recruiting to your organization and integrating that on all of the different fundraising pages that you have. And then a very key staple to all fundraisers is that thermometer, right? We, we want to see that thermometer hit over 100% of the goal. And this is a really useful tool to help your supporters and those that are donating to um, understand their impact that they're making um, and how close you are to reaching your overall goal. We've talked a lot about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and enabling your supporters to make it really easy. One of the ways to help overcome some of that anxiety that we were talking about is providing a lot of fundraising resources to make it really easy for anyone that is uh, jumping in to uh, fundraise on your behalf um, is looking at ways that you can um, really get them familiar with how to fundraise. What are the best practices? What are not? Uh, what are some things that you should look at doing? Tips. Um, you are all professional fundraisers. Some of the people that you are recruiting are not. They may have done this in the past and they may be rusty or they've never fundraised in at all. And so uh, one way to really provide a great overview of this is how you fundraise effectively is a guide. So uh, it, it should dive into all of the different ways to how to raise money, uh, how to tell your organization's story, um, include actions and items that your supporters should absolutely avoid. Um, and then essentially just help them get familiar with your fundraising tools that you're that you're utilizing if it's not built in and including all of those email templates that uh, appeal templates that we talked about earlier. Uh, additionally, if you are when you're thinking about uh, recruiting your board members and really any other local community or business leaders, a really personalized toolkit is really helpful. And um, this is something that QGIF put together, um, I think, two years ago now. Um, and it has really all of those resources to really get everyone kickstarted into understanding not only DIY and network fundraising and how it works, but also providing uh, fundraising resources for your supporters, specifically to these types of fundraisers. Um, and this toolkit also provides a lot of examples from uh, other nonprofits and how they successfully hosted these types of fundraisers, which we'll include in our follow-up email to the webinar so that you can easily access that uh, and see really an in-depth guide to all of this that we're talking about today. I know I've talked a lot, <laughs> lots of best practices. And basically, I want to make sure that we have time not only for Q&A, but I also want to show you how this has been done in the real world, right? We talk about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising all day, what the best practices are, but how has someone actually put this out and done this in the real world? One of my uh, favorite examples uh, that we're going to talk about here is the St. Louis Dancing with the Stars. And then we're also going to talk a bit more about another uh, uh, organization, but tying everything back to your community and where you can look to find different types of uh, network fundraisers. So um, Caitlin, who unfortunately was sick today, um, she has a lot of experience of uh, doing these types of things and helping to recruit uh, new staff or to recruit new volunteers to help out. And so this is a, a really in-depth slide about um, how to tie this all back to your organization and your community. And one of the things that um, 
she um, liked to give an example of is uh, that one question that she always got from new staff was, um, where do I find all of these people and how do I empower them to raise money? And it's always the million dollar question. And uh, her advice was to picture the qualities um, I'd like in a fundraiser. Who would I find to uh, be the, the ideal candidate, for example? Um, Well-connected, organized, and then passionate about your mission. And there's tons of different areas where you can look at this. We've, we've talked about this at length. Um, another area that you can dive into is any businesses that have historically sponsored uh, your organization um, and uh, really leaning into the education side of uh, helping to uh, recruit all of your supporters. So uh, one of the uh, independent center, this is the one that I've been referencing all day uh, in the webinar. It's because it is an amazing uh, competition that they put on together. Um, and the way that it is uh, organized is they find, is the independent center, they find and recruit local business leaders. Uh, these business leaders work with uh, dancers and uh, they compete. So the first year that they did this was in uh, 2022. And they, uh, I believe this uh, that was the first time, it might've been during COVID in 21, uh, where we couldn't really have big events yet, but they've hosted it both a live and a completely virtual experience uh, throughout the number of years that they've hosted this. Um, and as we mentioned before, that guests can vote uh, for the winner by donating. Um, and generally where we see uh, the success and why it's an amazing event is because this is their signature fundraiser and uh, their 2022 event raised over $737,000 uh, for their organization. So I've talked really at length about this particular example. Um, happy to dive into any more details about how they made this successful, but uh, really enjoy dancing with uh, with the star St. Louis. The next uh, example here is the Northern Illinois uh, Food Bank. So uh, they do lots of fundraisers and food drives to help support those that uh, in need. And one of the major things that you can see here that they've done really effectively um, is providing access one on how to utilize different social media tools, but then to break it up by the experience of who they have recruited uh, to fundraise for them. So they have a uh, very easy way for teams to uh, get deeper and learn more about how they can make an impact to all the way to the individual into, uh, person uh, who is looking to, for example, feed a neighbor. So as you can see, they, they provided a various different ways in which they can engage their supporters and then educate them how they can uh, register. Uh, additionally, they have a ton of turnkey resources that they utilize uh, for their supporters and all of those and provide lots of social media graphics uh, to help their supporters quickly share the fundraiser online and all their social media uh, and really effectively used uh, badges and leaderboards to keep that momentum going. Um, this is another great example of uh, an organization that did really, really well with it and um, organized their uh, fundraiser in the best way to support those that are going to be raising funds. We've talked a lot about Kuga's peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools already, so there's nothing else that I really need to add other than um, everything that you saw today through the slides and where I plugged in QGIV, we have all of those tools available uh, for your organization should you use the QGIV plat fundraising platform. So, um, you know, if you are interested, please do uh, request a demo. Um, I'm sure our team would be happy to show you all around um, and show you why peer to peer is so effective and uh, show you QGIV's platforms. So, I, I really want to thank everyone uh, for joining today. We are about to get into Q&A here in a moment, but I did want to call it a bit because we've, we've talked about it a little bit, is that earlier this year, QGive joined the Bloomerang team, and together we're offering a modern giving platform that puts relationships at the heart of fundraising. Our combined solution unifies your donors' activities, giving you the power to acquire new donors through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, for example, cultivate impactful relationships, 
through the powerful retention tools built into Bloomerang and maximize the potential of your donor communities. If you have any questions about the QGIF fundraising platform, please email us. If you are a QGIF customer already, you can email us at support at QGIF.com or you can give us a call. Up to you, however you would like to interact with our amazing customer experience team. If you are not currently using QGIV and you're interested in learning more, you can request a demo at QGIV.com slash demo dash request, or you can just log into QGIV.com. It's a big request a demo button on the website that you can just click on. And if you're looking for any more best practices, you can go to QGIV.com slash blog. We have a ton of different resources and an easy way to filter through all of them so that you can find any information that you're looking for. Now I think it's time for Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much for this incredible presentation, Justin. Uh, we learned a lot about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, it doesn't look like we have very many open questions right now. Oh, one just came in. Um, Amy wants to know, what is your backend processor? We have... I can answer that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to be best. <laughs> um, our preferred processor at this time is WorldPay. We do have a uh, partner relationship with them. However, we are able to also connect with Stripe and Authorize.net. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brittany. Um, we did get a question about some links that were um, shown in the presentation, and we will make sure to add all of those links to our follow-up email that is going out tomorrow with a copy of the slides and also um, the um, webinar recording. Um, that'll all be in the follow-up email tomorrow afternoon, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. Um, Marissa wants to know what's the baseline cost for our fundraising platform? Sure. So just to start really quickly, if, if you are going to just sign up for uh, QGIVs um, basic package for donation forms or our uh, standard event registration, it's no cost. It's just a it, no cost monthly. I will say that. So it's zero dollars a month um, for that um, particular piece. Um, and there's just processing fees to pay uh, through when someone donates through the, through the form or they register for your event. Uh, specifically for the peer-to-peer -peer component, peer-to-peer uh, -peer is $259 a month. Um, and if you do pay on a quarterly basis, it's $687 a quarter. So you can actually save $90 uh, with that particular package. Uh, something that is that I love about QGIVs uh, pricing structure is that you don't need to like commit to a full year of the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools. You only really need to pay for when you're using it. So if you only wanna use it for a month or you wanna use it for the quarter, you can absolutely just pay for when you need it. And then you can deactivate your peer-to-peer -peer package whenever, uh, whenever you're done. So uh, something that is really flexible in our pricing, um, it's really great and helpful to your organization. Awesome. I'm not seeing any other questions right now. It looks like you answered them all throughout <laughs> your presentation. Um, so I think that if anybody else has any questions, uh, feel free to reach out um, through email, uh, give us a phone call, like Justin said. Um, our team of customer experience specialists will be more than happy to help you with any questions, anything that you need, from QGIV, um, we've got an expert team there um, and they're great at their jobs. Um, so <laughs> thank you to everyone uh, for joining us for this webinar today um, and have a great rest of your Tuesday. Bye everyone. Have a great day everyone.